Welcome in, everybody, to WXOU Sports as we are now in game two of the midweek series between the Golden Grizzlies and their in-state rival, the Detroit Mercy Titans. I'm Giovanni Mosheri here for Play by Play alongside Drew Allison as we'll be covering the first game of today's doubleheader. And Oakland looking for the sweep after they got the 10-0 win in the first game yesterday, finishing it in five innings. Drew, this one, it's an in-state rivalry, so there's always going to be that juice there, but it was a great win for Oakland yesterday. Yeah, definitely. Reese Ruhlman in the first inning shot home a two-run homer to get the scoring started. Oakland would eventually take that game in five innings as they won 10-0, victory of the mercy rule. You wonder if today's a bit of the same story, but you never know. Rivalries like this, we saw it in the basketball season earlier this year. U of D not having a great season, but they came out and played the Golden Grizzlies tough. More could be the same in story for today. Definitely. Let's get to the starting lineups here as, we're, as action is beginning here at the Oakland softball field here at WXOU Sports. Detroit Mercy will be starting in their for their starting lineup. Spot one will go to the center fielder, Trinity Fessler. And going down the list, Jada Davis, followed by Jordan Cavanaugh, Allison Donahue, Jaden Lara, Amanda Scheich, Alexis Hall. here, as a Dakota graduate myself, I must mention that Alyssa Balcom, the starting pitcher for today, and starting off for batting Brooklyn Plitz, recent graduates of Dakota High School, and they have support in the stands here today from their alma mater. Yeah, they do. We saw the group of Dakota faithful walk in. Joe is a big red. I can't say I love it, but nonetheless, <laughs> I'm a Golden Grizzly at heart now. Worth noting on the Oakland University starting lineup, they have two lefties, the rest, all righties today. So we'll see if they need to adjust the lineup depending on what they, when they face righties and face lefties in order to give themselves a bit of a mismatch in the batting order. And for the pitching today, Alyssa Balcom, even though she does come in as a freshman, we saw her last weekend against Youngstown State, had a great showing against Youngstown State. And by the way, who were undefeated in the series with the Golden Grizzlies, but Balcom in game two was able to hold the goal, was able to hold uh, the Penguins to about three runs. Unfortunately, that game ended in a 3-1 loss. However, multiple even in the fifth inning. Bases were loaded early. Not many outs on the board. One or even none outs by the time the bases got loaded. And she was able, through a couple of mound meetings, was able to dig the Golden Grizzlies out of it and leave Youngstown State with no points in those innings. So definitely don't underestimate the freshman, former Cougar, now Golden Grizzly, Alyssa Balcom. Yeah, Alyssa Balcom actually has the second lowest ERA on the team at 2.97 but she has one of the worst records on the team at two and five, so it's not been a problem with her pitching. It's actually been a problem of the offense when she's in there. The Golden Grizzlies have struggled to get the bats going and to get runs on the board. She has the second lowest hits I'm, for major starting pitcher. She has the second lowest hits on the team at 34. She's been a great pitcher for this team this year, but when she's been in there, the offense has struggled. So you hope that today is a bit different of a recipe and that they can start chalking up wins for her and get maybe maybe get her to back to a 500 record on the year. And looking at the other pitching, or the pitching on the other side for Detroit Mercy, Jordan Cavanaugh will be starting on the mound for the Titans. We're allowing, unfortunately, a, three, a 365 batting average with A. So it looks like the matchup, at least statistically, on the numbers, by the numbers, does favor the Golden Grizzlies here. Yeah, Jordan Cavanaugh, 0-12 on the year. We know that the Detroit Mercy Titans only have one win on the year. They're 1-26, but Jordan Cavanaugh, their most experienced pitcher on the year. It shows that they do trust her, and they do think that she can get that win at some point this year when you pitch your starting pitcher 12 times. And definitely, and when, when you see a record like 1-26, obviously the first thing that you think of is, is more of a uh, dust-off-the-shoulder kind of uh, you know, whatever type of deal here. But whenever you're in that kind of situation, there's no better time to start getting wins than now. So, and especially right here at the Oakland softball field against your in-state rivals, there's no better time to kind of get a spark back going into the season. Exactly, and they would love to spoil the Cancer Day celebration here for the Golden Grizzlies as we get set. As we're getting now into action here, Balcom with the first pitch. Pump swing, it will be called a, it will be called a ball there by Trinity Fessler. Up to bat to lead things off for the Detroit Mercy Titans. Yeah, Fessler thought about it, but decided, nope, not her pitch, and held back on that one. Here's the 1-0, strike one, making it a 1-1 count. Yeah, Balcom working her fastball here, no movement on that pitch, stayed low and outside the whole time and fed it in there. And here comes the 1-1. Down to the outside to make it ball two. Balcom really working the outside of the plate here, keeping the ball away 
from Trinity Fessler. I'd like to remind everybody, if you're listening to us on YouTube for our WXW Sports YouTube channel, which is the exclusive spot to get your Golden Grizzlies athletics, as a ground ball is hit to the shortstop and out at first base for Fessler. Jenna Johnson was able to scoop it up and send it over to first in a hurry. Now batting number four, it was an easy one there for Jenna Johnson. Ball was hit pretty much directly to her. Maybe had to move a little bit of about a foot to her left and then fired one in there to the first baseman for the one up, one down. And coming up next for Detroit Mercy is Jada Davis, number two, or excuse me, number four, the shortstop for the Titans. Here comes the opening pitch. Strike right down the middle for Balcom. Uh, Balcom just once again using her fastball to get this going by the batters. Got to set them up for later in the game when maybe you might slow it down a little bit, but now's the time to bring the heat. Here's the 1-0 outside and away. Yep, that was an off speed there. You saw the ball hang up high. She, you wanted it to come down a little bit, probably looking at a sinker or maybe a changeup, but the ball hung up high, never dropped into the zone. An easy ball call there. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Down the middle, pump swing. That'll be a ball as it was two inside. Yeah, another fastball, so she went she went on speed, off speed, on speed, and that fastball just inside a little bit. Balcom getting ready. Here's a 2-1. Foul ball over to the right fence, hitting the neck of the bat. But Davis stays alive. Another fastball there by Balcom, but this time Davis able to get a piece of it. 2-2 two, two at the top of the first. If you're just joining us here on WXLU Sports, Giovanni Mosheri here with Drew Allison. And here comes a 2-2. Two, two. Swing, it just clipped off the top of the bat, sending it back to the fence to stay alive. I believe it actually caught a tip of the glove there as well. But hard to tell with how quickly that was going. <laughs> this fastball's real fast. <laughs> they are. The count's now 2-2. Two, two. Malcolm with it. Low and away, that one will roll by. Bring it to a full count, and we got a countdown up on the scoreboard here. Number four with ball threes, two strikes and one out. Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm looking to go two for two here if she can get this retire. With the full count, here's the pitch. Fast one, but it was just a little too high to bring a runner to first. A little high, a little inside. I don't think Balcom necessarily agreed with it, but nonetheless, Blue makes the Jordan call. Kavanaugh. Jordan Kavanaugh getting her turn at bat. The pitcher, Jordan Kavanaugh, batting cleanup, so you know that she's got some power. Batting 333 on the year as Balcom fires a fastball in there. Right down the middle for strike one. A slug percentage for Kavanaugh at 667. Team lead right there. And on base percentage at 429. She has a knack for getting on base. There's a pitch, real fast one. Brought some heat on that for strike two. See Balcom working her on speeds here. Back to back fastballs here on Kavanaugh. Probably going to look to maybe throw a low breaking ball here. We got, the Daco speed. we got the Dakota Cougar against the Chippewa Valley Big Red. That one's just outside. Fastball outside, yep. She went a little off speed there, a little slower, but. Unable to locate it to where she wants it. And Kavanaugh, a transfer from Western Michigan, coming from the MAC to the Horizon League, but staying in state. Here's the one, two. Up and away. That one will be thrown to first base just to make sure there's no funny business going after Davis up there at first for the Titans. After back to back strikes, now Balcom's got back to back balls. Got to go back to her bread and butter here, that on speed pitch. Fire this one home, retire a second. Here's the two, two. Little too high there, that'll bring it at a full count. Unable to locate that fastball there, just went high again. Balcom yep. needs to settle down here, and she can fire one in and retire two. With a full count, here it comes. Little bit high, that one will walk Kavanaugh as well. Kavanaugh started off really good. She started off really well with that first batter, retiring Trinity Fessler, and then the last two batters in Davis and Kavanaugh, she started off great in the count and then has just fallen apart after two strikes. Unable to locate those pitches with two strikes on the board and get one home as we see a mound meeting happening here between the catcher and the pitcher. Yeah, we have a bit of a meeting there. Got to make sure that 
you know, you settle the nerves a little bit. It's easy to have yourself spiral when it comes to the, you know, the beginning of the game here. You're like, oh, no, you're, you're, you know, you're not doing so high. The whole game could be at risk. You start to escalate it in your head there. You've got to relax a little bit. And that's an amount meeting with the veteran catcher, Jen Kritzka, is just what the doctor ordered to try and help calm those nerves for Alyssa Balcom. Yeah, Jen Kritzka is going to try and settle down her pitcher here, retire the second batter. But here, if you're looking at the Grizzlies, the best case scenario would, would be, you know, fire one in the shortstop and turn two and get out of this inning, get the bats up there. Your offense is your strength. They've scored 10 runs yesterday. They definitely have a chance to put those up again today. And up to bat now is Donahue. Allison Donahue for Detroit Mercy. There's a hit right down the middle towards second base, rolling. Onto, onto second base itself. Jenna Johnson was able to slide in, tap out at second with a little bit of a stumble into second base there. That'll leave runners on the corner, but that is the second out. But Detroit Mercy is threatening to score. Yeah, Jenna Johnson wanted to flip that one up to the second baseman there. Second baseman being Macy Brown and then turn two, but just unable to. It looked like she caught a spike and unfortunately fell on the ground. Yeah, that one rolling right past the pitcher's mound like they were playing bochi. <laughs> <laughs> and now there, there's the bat rolling right to first base. Out at first to close out the inning. Batting was number 18. That was Jaden Lara to close out the inning for Detroit Mercy's first at bat here. Oakland survives having bases almost loaded. And it will end the first oh, inning, top of the first inning, enough. with a scoreless scoreboard right now. We'll be right back here on WXOU Sports for Oakland's first at bat in the bottom of the first. Welcome back, everybody, to WXOU Sports. Oakland's now up at bat here after holding the Titans to no points at the top of the first, even though they had runners threatening to score. Alyssa Balcom was able to dig herself and the Golden Grizzlies out to leave now Brooklyn Pitts leading off to bat for Oakland in the bottom of the first. Brooklyn Pitts batting 316 on the year, slug percentage 342, and on-base percentage also at 316. So someone that has struggled to find walks, but she's been able to pound in hits and get on base. First pitch will be a strike for Kavanaugh. We like, see a little bit of a defensive adjustment here to Plitz. You see the third baseman there being Amanda Schick coming really far up for Brooklyn Plitz, anticipating a short grounder to third as Plitz swings through that one. Swings wa walking through it as well. And we mentioned before when Kavanaugh was up at bat against Alyssa Balcom for the matchup between the former Cougar and Big Red. Now we have another one with a batter, <laughs> with Oakland at bat this time, of Brooklyn Plitz, a uh, recent graduate of Dakota High School. Here's the 0-2, pop up towards right field. That one will hit the dirt. And Brooklyn Plitz will reach first. So I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that the adjustment by U of D did not work in the favor <laughs> of them. As you saw Amanda Schick, the third baseman, come up anticipating a short you know, third, third base grounder, but nonetheless, Flitz went the opposite way and sent one over into right field that just kind of dropped just shy of the glove of the right fielder, being Jenna Holt. Now we'll bring up the second in the batting order for the Golden Grizzlies, Macy Brown, one of the veterans for the Oakland squad. And a bunt towards third base. 
will bring a runner to first, Macy Brown herself, and then, ooh, just not quite, <laughs> excuse me, let that one play out a little bit before the ruling was declared that the bunt was uh, unsuccessful, returning Plitz to first base, and yeah. Macy Brown up, returning to the plate. World on the left side of that third base white line, just a little too early. <laughs> Our angle view here has not doing us much favors here, Drew. It is deceiving, <laughs> to say the least. Well, as it stands out, here's the 0-1. A pop-up towards third base will drop into the glove of Schick for Detroit Mercy. That's first out. Or excuse me, that'd be Davis. Yes, shortstop. So that's first out. And coming up to bat now is third in the order, the veteran catcher, Jen Kritzka. And her iconic walk-up song of Let's Go to the Mall as uh, she told us after the game against Youngstown State that her and her family used to watch How I Met Your Mother back when it was live, coming out weekly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jen Kritzka, the best hitter on this team, batting 416 this year, started all 26 games of the year, 31 hits, and three home runs also to lead the team. She has half the team's total home run count, three of the six, and 21 RBIs for herself as well. Here's the 0-1, little bit outside for Kavanaugh. And yeah, Jen Kritzka, she is a historic home run hitter for the Golden Grizzlies. She now ranks second all time in career home runs with 20. Yeah, she knows how to make contact with the bat. She has a, a, a bit of an unusual batter stance, but you'll notice she changes as the pitch winds up and then she's able to get set. A little bit of a momentum shift there to try and drive some of that power through the ball. As a strike was thrown by Kavanaugh, catching Kritzka on a pump. Bring up a one-two. Else has. Looking at the wristband, and here comes a two-two. Big swing, hit the top of the bat. That'll drop right into shallow left field to move the bases for the Golden Grizzlies. Good drive, good drive there by Kriska. She saw the ball, waited for it, drove it into left field, just over the second baseman in a shortstop, but short of that center, or that excuse me, left fielder, able to drop in the gap and get her a single and advance bin in this year but she has a really good on-base percentage above 400, so she's been able to get walked quite a bit this year as well. <laughs> I always love the cheers that they have in the dugout for their, for their teammates. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like softball and cheer. And the ball outside from Kavanaugh. Brooklyn Plitz thought about stealing third there, but the catcher for U of D being Elise, Elisa Adams was able to get up and kind of hold her there. There's a Plitz pinch right Here she goes. Flashing oh. a bunt, trying to steal bases was both, or rather anticipating the bunt there, even full of the base runners. But everyone stays put, it's ball two. The 2-0 count right now. Oakland with two runners, on one on first, one on second. See, Plitz in like a track and field runner stance here. She's ready to go as we have a foul. Foul pop up towards the center fence. Luckily being covered by that little angled piece that they have there to keep the foul balls limited. Yes, definitely. And One will come over eventually. It's just a matter <laughs> of time. I brought my glove just in case. <laughs> it's a 2 1 count right now. Here it comes. Fast and outside, once that'll be ball three. Once again, Plitz thinking about it. Plitz is just right here. itching to go forward. She is, she definitely is. At, so for Caraway here, it's a three one count. I wouldn't be too, too jumpy on this pitch as she pops one up in a shallow midfield. That'll be right to Kavanaugh, the oh, pitcher. Just not sure if that pitch was her pitch. You're at a three one count, you've got two on base, one out. Take one more pitch. If you if you don't feel excellent about it, take one more pitch, and then you're in a full count, and then you've got the chance to be swinging or not. But if you take that one pitch, you force a full count, and you force a little bit of pressure on the pitcher for the Titans and Kavanaugh, and you can possibly get three on with one out. As it stands right now with two outs in the bottom of the first, Oakland with two base runners. It'll now be Maggie Murphy at the plate for the Golden Grizzlies. Noticing Plitz, every single pitch, she is running almost about a quarter of the way between second and third. Now, when one does get, if one does become a hit, 
I can't imagine she's going to have much energy with how much she's running <laughs> every single pitch here. She's going to be gassed. And a foul ball swinging right towards the Oakland dugout. Almost took out uh, Troyer, who's waiting who's waiting in uh, by the dugout. <laughs> almost took out yeah. her knees. Cameron Troyer just minding her own business. Almost <laughs> just needed an ambulance to take her for knee surgery. She's worried about figuring out what Kavanaugh might give her. And Lord behold, a ball <laughs> comes flying at her. Always got to keep a sharp eye. Absolutely. Here's the 1-1. Thinking about it, and that one will be called a strike. Murphy getting her fair share of encouragement from the crowd and the dugout. Oh. Kavanaugh in a one-two count now, probably gonna dial up one of her favorite pitches to try and retire this batter, get out of the inning. That'll leave two runners on base in that case. The one-two. Swing that one, she, a half swing on that one rather. That will be called a ball. A little bit of a uh, in-between uh, from the reaction of the crowd. U of D players, fans, and coaches all thought that that one was a strike, but nonetheless, Blue's going to call that one a ball. There's a 2-2, two -two, a swing at it. will fly past the left uh, fence for a foul ball, keeping Maggie Murphy alive at the plate here, trying to cash in on these two Golden Grizzlies, waiting to come back home. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, that pitch, it was a little high in the zone, but I think it could have been a rule to strike nonetheless. But we play on. 2-2, two, two, two outs, two runners on base. There's a the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Kavanaugh will strand two runners for the Golden Grizzlies to keep it scoreless. 0-0 zero, zero after a full first oh, inning here at the Oakland the softball Oakland field. We're gonna take a break here to bring you to the top of the second where Detroit Mercy will return to the plate. We'll be right back here on WXOU Sports. Welcome back everybody to WXOU Sports. If you're watching with us on YouTube, we apologize for the technical difficulties with the live stream. But as it stands right now, we are scoreless after one inning and returning to the top. This time in the second inning, where Detroit Mercy is back at bat. Batting right now is number five, six in the lineup, the junior Schick. Yeah, Schick, the third baseman. This year batting 200, so not quite the numbers you'd want to see, but she started every single game this year. 65 at bats, 13 hits, so looking to get those numbers. Okay, we've got a bit of a righty on righty here, so advantage to Balcom as Schick's batting righty, and Balcom's a right-handed pitcher, but Schick doing a little bit of a different stance in the batter's box. You notice she's really, really far back in her lateral and also her horizontal. She's back to that back left corner towards the glove side of the catcher. We got right now a 2-2 count here. Look for a strikeout to open the top of the second. Here's Balcom. Toss that one little outside to bring it to a full count here. Amanda Schick looking to get on base to get things rolling for her Titans. Yeah, I've done a couple of those in my baseball day, and they're, <laughs> not, they're not fun. They're definitely a little bit of a stinger as she's going to talk to her third base coach and get a little bit of some 
consoling here as I'm yeah. sure she's dealing with a bit of a stinger. For those that don't know what that's like, it's like <laughs> when you're playing basketball, you're running around, and you roll your ankle. Yeah. It's a little bit of a twister. It hurts for five minutes, ten minutes maybe, but then you're all right. You know, right. no long-term injury, but it's definitely a stinger when it happens. Yeah, except this time it's more like getting hit with a rock. <laughs> yes. And if you're not athletic at all, imagine when, you, <laughs> imagine when you're going upstairs and you fall. It's like that. And strike three will be thrown by Balcom to send Schick back to the dugout and to now bring up number six, Alexis Hoff, the catcher from New Baltimore, New Michigan. Alexis Hoff down on her averages this year, only at 163. So someone is definitely looking to get going. It's been a slow start to the season for her, but she can get going anytime. And she swings at the first one, catches a little bit of the ball as it's shot right to the ground for a foul ball there. Back to the uh, shin and stairs. You ever had that <laughs> where you're like going up the stairs or oh, like as a yeah. kid and you fall and your shin just smacks that like T yeah. spot of the stairs? Oh, definitely. And when we get back, when we get to the top of the stairs, that's where the carpet uh, stairs become the tile. Yes. Oh, that one. Yes. That, that one's murderous. The tile stairs. Oh, dude, the <laughs> tile stairs. <laughs> or, or like came up right to the kitchen at the top of the stairs where it yep. turned the tile. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, they're brutal. Or like, <laughs> I like those playscapes as a kid where it's all metal. <laughs> you know, you're at recess in fourth grade playing tag or whatever, and you're running, you lose a foot, and then bam! <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm done. I'm out. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That one will throw outside. 1-2 count now. Behind the Golden Grizzly faithful. Over behind center field, we got a, a nice group up on the hill. With a flag staked, showing Oakland University pride. So to talk about this Hoff stands compared to Schick's last one. So Schick we saw very far, very far back in the batter's box, and then backed up as well. Hoff a little bit different. He out and puts a lot of weight on that front foot. And winds up in a swing that will drop right towards second base at a full count, as Hoff will reach first. Macy Brown went for the diving catch there, but just unable to get the glove all the way out. Got a bit of a tip on it, but not able to corral it as she was trying to make the diving catch. Perfect placement just where the ball needed to drop to get on base for Detroit Mercy. Coming up now is Claire Borg, the freshman from St. Clair, Michigan. Up to bat now for the Titans. Here's the first pitch. Pump swing at that one. That'll be ruled a ball there. I thought she went a little 51% on that swing there, yep. but. They appealed it to the first base umpire, <laughs> and he said, nope, she was good. All right. And also worth mentioning is that was the first hit given up by Balcom in this game. She's had a couple walks, but that was the first hit she's given up. She pumps one in there for a strike on the fastball. Head coach for the Detroit Mercy Titans, Dan Vitale, giving a little Little information, little help over on the third base mark. Here's the 1-1. That'll be strike two for Alyssa Balcom. Balcom got a gift there. That one outside to the right. But nonetheless, Blue saw it as a strike. As she now has a 1-2 count ahead on the count here is Balcom. No out so far. Top of the second. We're tied at zero. Here's the 1-2. Big swing pop up. That'll be out foul ball over to the right. That'll land almost into the pile of tires that we have here at the Oakland softball field. I didn't know those were there. Yeah, I'm not really <laughs> sure what those would be for. There's perhaps they're for training. You do for you uh, the you, tired train. Yeah, could you be. play uh, uh what's an um pa like pass through pass through. Yeah. Yeah. Hopscotch. So, that's what I'm thinking of. Excuse uh, me. <laughs> play hopscotch with the tires. I suppose they could be uh, <laughs> used tires for the tractors that mow these fields and everything as well. Could be that. That are now used for that. They once had use for what they were <laughs> intended for. Here's a 2-2 count. No outs. Runner on base for Detroit Mercy. And here's the pitch. A little bit high on a pump. The oh. Detroit Mercy Titans is Jenna Holtz, the sophomore outfielder from Algonac, Michigan. Jenna Holt on the year batting 173. As the ground ball goes towards... Taylor Carraway launches over to first base for the final out of the top of the second. No runs and a hit for Detroit No Mercy. runs and a hit and for Detroit Mercy. Second. In the no top of the second here, we'll be taking a break here on WXOU Sports to bring you the Golden Grick and Chance at bat right here on WXOU Sports.
Welcome back, everybody, to WXOU Sports. It's Golden Grizzly softball here today for game two against Detroit Mercy. Oakland up 1-0 in the series so far. We're now in the bottom of the second with Oakland at bat. It will be up to bat. It will be number two. Excuse, excuse me, Cameron 24, Cameron Troyer up to bat now for the Golden Grizzlies. Yep, Cameron Troyer gets her first look at Kavanaugh, the former Big Red pitcher for the Titans. Kavanaugh had a pretty good first inning. Gave up one or two hits, but two hits, excuse me, but shut down everybody else. And a foul ball swung off the top of the bat there. We'll hit the fence for a foul ball to start things off in this inning with a strike. Yeah, Troyer just got underneath that one a little bit. It was a good pitch to swing at down the middle, right where she wants it. It was a bit of an off, bit of an off speed, but just not able to get up on top of that ball and move it. Yo, one count, here it comes. Rolling over past home plate there, ball one. Yep, Kavanaugh went with a breaking ball there, not able to get a clean release on that ball, and that r resulted in a bowling ball rolling to <laughs> the catcher. Bit of a bochi roll in the, uh, in the Italian household, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kavanaugh getting ready for the 1-1. Look at the wristband, and here it comes. Big hit, shallow one, rolling over to center field there as Cam Troyer reaches first. Yeah, Cam Troyer got on top of that one. Er a bit of an early swing there but just drilled that one right over Kavanaugh, and that ball lit, bounced about maybe six inches behind the second base, rolled into center field, where it was then sent infield by Fessler. So a really good hit there by Troyer, as she starts this inning off with a hit. And now up to bat, looking to advance her teammate is number 25, Mia Kanifka. A look at the wristband for Kavanaugh, and strike one thrown. Yeah, Kanivka thought about going for it, but then just held up a little bit, decided it wasn't her pitch. Kanivka, 200 on the year, so looking to start chalking up those numbers a little bit. She's played in 10 games this year, nine of them being a pinch hitting. Flashing a bunt there on the 0-1, and it <laughs> looks like Cameron Troyer dodged a potential out there as she was barely able to return to first base as they gave her a little check. To a 1-1, no outs, runner on first for Oakland. The 1-1, here it comes, there's the bunt. Running over to first base, Kanivka looking for it. Troyer gets over to second. Kanivka can't get there in time. Can Troyer get to third? She can! Wow, heck of some base running there by Troyer and heads up base running. She got to second really, really quickly, a great lead off for her and then saw the, the pop possibility to go three when she saw that the ball was still at first and able to get there in time. How about that, getting from first to third, that, that's some bang for your bunts right there. Absolutely. Now up to bat for the Golden Grizzlies, double zero, the sophomore Jenna Johnston. But not before a mound meeting with head coach Dan Vitale of Detroit Mercy and the rest of his defense there, trying to recuperate. You know, you got a runner threatening to score now. You got to have a game plan. Yeah, Jenna Johnston, not one of the big hitters on this team. A really, really good fielder, but not one of the biggest hitters for this team. And a righty, so she's facing a righty, so advantage to, Ka to Kavanaugh here. 146 is her average on the year. She's been in 19 games. Only one of them as a pinch hitter, so she has the experience of these type of moments. Jenna Johnson, a member of the 2023 Horizon League Softball All-Tournament team, as a foul ball shot up sky high over to pass uh, the left fence there for a foul ball. Yeah, Jenna Johnson just needs to put one in play here outside of the infield to let the runner come home from third in Troyer. And then the Golden Grizzlies are up on the board, so she's going to be looking for a pitch down towards the middle of the plate to get underneath it and send it to the outfield. An 0-1 count right now, one out. Looking for the bunt there was Johnston, can't quite get there. <laughs> Troyer almost thought uh, to go home, but <laughs> resisted, uh, resisted the temptation 
Yeah, Johnston went for a late bunt. She wasn't set there, trying to catch the Titans off guard, going for the bunt at the last second to try and bring Troyer home, but just unsuccessful. So now, two strike count. Yeah, 0-2. Oh, count right now, here it comes. Big swing that'll roll over to second base and then to first, but it will bring Cameron Troyer home. That really good job there by Jenna to sacrifice RBI. So you sent one to the second baseman. Easy flip there for the out at first. But Troy are able to score home. No chance of turning two there for the Titans. So the Golden Grizzlies are on the board. And that, yeah, that'll open it up now for the Golden Grizzlies. 1-0, Oakland with the lead now in the bottom of the second here. And up to bat right now to follow it up for the Golden Grizzlies is number seven, Maddie Harrington. And she takes a big swing. That'll foul ball to the left as the third baseline camera guy had to duck for that one. He <laughs> was fearing his camera is in the hit zone on there. That'll be strike one. Oakland with two outs right now, but we're able to clear the bases to score on that previous at bat. And another strike thrown by Kavanaugh will bring it to another 0-2 count here. Harrington up against it in the count. See if it can work. See if, see if she can work her way back. Here's the pitch. Big swing, pop up, over towards second base, drops right into the glove for the third out, and to close out the second inning. Oakland able to score their first to bring it to a 1-0 game as we enter the third inning right here on WXOU Sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to WXOU Sports as Oakland got the scoring started in the bottom of the second here to bring it to a 1-0 game in game two against Detroit Mercy. Giovanni Moschieri here with Drew Allison. Now at the top of the third, it is Fessler, Trinity Fessler, the catcher for Detroit Mercy at bat. Returning to the top of the order here for the Titans. Yeah, Trinity Fessler in her first outing was not able to punch home a hit. Or excuse me. No, she was not. <laughs> so, sorry, looking at the wrong thing. As and she big, drives one here. Big hit to right field. That one will drop on the turf, and she'll make her way to second base. Trinity Fessler getting the second hit so far in the game for Detroit Mercy. A monster hit. Yep. Just dropped perfectly in place in between Troyer and Plitz over in the outfield. The righty went to the opposite side, drove one to right field, got on top of that pitch early, and just punctured it out there. And that'll bring up number four, Jada Davis for Detroit Mercy. On deck is Kavanaugh and Donahue. A bunt attempt will fly past for strike one. As Davis unable to make contact with it. That'll be an 0-1 count to start things off for 
this inning for Detroit. There's another bunt. That one will go through, advancing a runner to third. That'll be an out at first base, but now Detroit Mercy is threatening to tie the game with Fessler waiting there on third. The Titans giving the Golden Grizzlies a bit of a taste of their own medicine with these bunts. At that number 27, That's like we've been saying, when it comes to these rivalry games, no matter what sport here in the Horizon League, Detroit and Oakland play each other tough. They sure do. And that will bring up Kavanaugh, the pitcher, and now also batter for Detroit Mercy. There's the pitch. Down the middle there, a little bit too much inside for ball one. A matchup we'll be seeing all day long here. Dakota Cougar in a Chippewa Valley Big Red. There's the second pitch. That'll be another ball there. A 2-0 count right now. Kavanaugh in good position. Kavanaugh walked her first at bat. Looking to get on base here again, I'm sure. But would love nothing more than to get one into the outfield to drive home that run. And here comes a 2-0. Letting that one go by for now a 3-0 count. Kavanaugh in really good position. Balcom, to gotta, be, back. gotta be careful here if you're Balcom. You need a couple strikes here to have a chance to get out of this one. Throw another ball, you've got runners at the corners. Here's a 3-0 pitch. And that one's a ball. That will walk at Detroit now with runners on the corners. A single out so far on the sacrifice bunt to get Fessler over to third base. And that'll now bring up number 15 for Detroit Mercy, Alyssa, Alyssa Donahue. Allison Donahue here. The sophomore pitcher. Not a pitcher today though, she's in the lineup. <laughs> a part-time pitcher we'll say. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. Runners on the corners here for Balcom. Balcom getting a decent way up in the pitch count. Already at 48 and Kavanaugh is still sub 40. So. They've been working Balcom's pitch count a lot more than they have with Kavanaugh. With an 0-1 count, here it comes. Slower one, that'll be a strike though on the outside. Caught him off speed there, that ball started high and then just dropped it, it was slow the whole way in. That'll be an 0-2. Balcom looking for a strikeout. Here it comes. That one a little too low and away to bring it now to a 1-2 count here. Detroit Mercy runners on the corners here. Here at the top of the third. 1-2, here it comes. That Fast one, just one high. up high. And we also have in attendance today a couple of representatives of the Oakland University swim and dive team. I swear, they're at every game. <laughs> Absolutely are. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Big swing, hit the neck of the bat there, going right over to Johnston, tagged out at second, and a double play for the Golden Grizzlies to end the top of the third. Fast forwarding the Detroit Mercy possession at bat here to keep them scoreless. Score right now, 1-0. Oakland maintains the lead going into the bottom of the third here. We'll be right back with Oakland at bat on WXOU Sports. Welcome back everybody to WXOU Sports as Oakland maintains their 1-0 lead by shutting out Detroit Mercy after they were threatening to score in the top of the third. We are now in the bottom of the third here. At the top of the lineup, returning to bat is number 15, Brooklyn Plitz for Oakland. I like how that worked is that both teams went to the top of the lineup in this inning. <laughs> yeah. You don't see that very often. But it shows that it's been a pretty evenly matched game. 
You get, I think the it, score would indicate that. Exactly, only a one, only a one-zero game. Oakland with the one-run lead. Two runs, or excuse me, two hits for Titans. Three for the Golden Grizzlies. And as, and it looks like Plitz able to make contact with it with a run-up start on the swing. Just barely unable to get to first base in time as Detroit Mercy was able to tag her out at first. But it really, it really was a race for it. That thing was close. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of a bang-bang play there, but nonetheless, the Titans prevail. Remember the Titans. <laughs> That'll bring up the second in the order here for Oakland. Number five, Macy Brown. You ever see that movie? I've seen it a couple of times in school. There you go. <laughs> it's a good movie. That's a great movie. That'll be a foul ball hitting the top of the bat here, flying behind the fence for Macy Brown, an 0-1 count right now. As Jordan Cavanaugh, 34 pitches so far. Here it comes a run up, hit, foul ball to the left. Popping up that one up as well. Foul ball with a shot of four, <laughs> where that one was headed. The 0-2 count now. And Macy Brown, 247 on the year. No hit today, her first at bat, she struck out. Excuse me, she hit out. On She's an 0-2, hits it right to the pitcher, unable to get the first base in time there. Back-to-back -back ground outs there for Macy Smith. Or Macy Brown, excuse me, Macy Brown. And then now that will bring up Jen Kritzka, third in the order here, number 11, the red shirt senior. As it is now time to go to the mall, as, as the song would indicate. Yes. <laughs> One of the most interesting walk-up songs, I think, in all of college baseball right there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> but I'm sure that there is someone that has the Friends theme song as their walk-up song as well. <laughs> and the foul ball is shot right over the, right uh, to the right fence, foul ball. Once again, those tires getting work back there. <laughs> Pile of tires <laughs> over by the, uh, the netting as that will be an 0-1 count right now. Two outs so far. Troy Mercy looking to keep Oakland scoreless in this third inning. A roller down low for Kavanaugh. Bring it to a 1-1 count. So far in the game, Oakland is three of 10 at bat. Detroit Mercy two of 10. But Detroit Mercy three walks. And then there's a pitch high and away for the second ball, 2-1 count, still two outs. Yep. So now here for Jen Kritzka, she's looking for powerfully an, an off speed down towards the center of the plate, one that she can drive opposite side and get on base. Here's a 2-1. Must have not found it, didn't swing for ball three. I haven't seen a whole lot of Kritzka this year, but I'm noticing so far with her, Really, really good eye. Works the pitch count well, works the plate well. Able to just see pitches go by and know if they're balls or strikes. It's gotta be really tough for Kavanaugh because she can't trick her. And she that comes another one go high. And that comes with a lot of experience for the redshirt senior, Jen Kritzka. She walks her way with the fourth ball being thrown to first base. That will now bring up number six, Taylor Carraway. Sophomore from Centerline, Michigan, graduate of Cusno High School. Yep, Carol, Caraway 302 on the year, second highest on the team, third highest on the team, excuse me, to just Kritzka and Brooklyn Plitz. Oakland now with a runner on first, two outs. Here's the first pitch. That one will bounce right casually into the glove of Kavanaugh, bouncing off the dirt in front of her. And just just laying into the glove there for the third out, keeping Oakland scoreless in the bottom of the third inning as Oakland maintains still their 1-0 lead. As we head to the top of the fourth here with Detroit Mercy looking to get another crack at the bats here on WXOU Sports. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to WXOU Sports. We are now in the top of the fourth inning here for Oakland softball as it's now game two of the series, the midweek series, against Detroit Mercy. Jaden Lara now up to bat for the Titans. And it's been a low scoring game, but Detroit Mercy has had plenty of chances at it, threatening to score twice so far in the game to try and tie to tie it. But as it remains, Oakland with the one with the one run lead. First ball being thrown by Alyssa Balcom. Here comes the second pitch. That one will be quick down the middle for strike one. Yeah, for Lara, one at bat today. She grounded out, so looking to get it up here, get started, get get some people on base, and hopefully get some points. One nothing game. A one one count. Here it comes. Pump swing at that one. Just not enough for the ump to call it a swing, so it'll be a two one count. Alyssa Balcom getting ready. Here comes a 2-1, big swing. That'll go right towards second base and a soft toss over to first will be an out to start off the inning for Detroit. Easy toss there for Brown to Beinowitz for that out. And I'll now bring up number five, Amanda Schick. Native of Chesterfield Township, a graduate of Anchor Bay. Yeah, Schick's had a couple really good plays of their third base today. She's been active, so she's definitely looking to get cracking here in the order. And a big hit just on the on the first base line. That one will be ruled a foul. It's out of our view, but by the deflation of the Detroit crowd, I would imagine it was a foul. <laughs> yes, I would also agree with that one. Sometimes you just got to read the room a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. The dugout mildly blocks our view. <laughs> With a 1-1 one, one count here now, Schick's definitely looking at a base. She's really super eager in that box. You can tell by her, just her body language. A couple of pump swings so far in the at-bat. This one resulting in just a ball. 2-1 count, one out so far. No runners on base for Detroit. And the top of the four, the high one, that will hit. The batter, that will hit Schick to bring her to first base. So the first time she fouled one off the ground to herself and hit herself. Now this time she gets hit by the pitch. Not a good day for Schick. A lot of contact from the from the softball that is all but soft. I'm sure if you're being uh, hit by it. Absolutely. But a quick mound meeting to calm the nerves of freshman Alyssa Balcom held on the mound here. Now a conversation between the umpire and Oakland head coach Samantha Henderson. Now batting number six. Alexis Hoff. Alexis Hoff now up to bat for Detroit Mercy, looking to advance the first base runner of Schick. With one out so far, 1-0 Oakland lead at the top of the fourth. Checking first base just to make sure there's no thievery going on there. Make sure there's no stealing and everyone's property belongs and stays with them. A 1-0 count so far, here it comes. Big hit, ground ball right in between. Second and third base, that will advance the runners as Hoff gets off the plate and over to first. Yep, so then shit goes to second and that ball just crushed between the shortstop of Johnson and the third baseman of Caraway. Not able to get there in time was Caraway. And nonetheless, we've got two batters on with no outs. Excuse me, one out, one out. And it's now up to Claire Borg, the freshman from St. Clair, Michigan, number 25 for the Titans. It's her job to get the bases moving. A lot of weight on the freshman's shoulders here. Got two batters on, you're down one nothing. So for the freshman, she's definitely gonna be looking to put one in play and try and get someone in scoring position, if not home. And here's the first pitch from Balcom at the at-bat. That one will fly through as a ball. Watching Schick there on second base, moving around a lot. Trying to be a distraction and eventually try and get to third, maybe on a steal if she gets a chance. Here comes the second pitch. That one will go a little bit higher for a second ball here. 
The Detroit crowd's excitement growing here with the at-bat and the opportunity to tie the game. A little bit of a revenge tour for the Titans today after losing yesterday 10-0 in the first five innings. Here's a 2-0. Swing right over to first base, just away from the glove of Bianowicz at first. That will load the bases. And now, if you're Oakland, I see some action in that bullpen. You wonder if Falca might be coming out here pretty soon. A uh, 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 piece of advice to take it easy, let it come to you from the support of Detroit crowd here. But this is a big opportunity for Detroit here with now bases we, loaded. Hold on, we have runners moving back. Seems to be a review of the a review of the call here. So the it was a shallow hit over towards first base. It was a little bit close to the first base line, just away from the glove of Leah Benowitz. But it looks like they'll be enforcing the foul ball call and redoing the last at bat. And that one is cracked to right field to not only make up for the call, but to advance the runners. One run, and here comes a second run, and Detroit is now leading. They did get the out at third, though, as, excuse me, Borg went for the triple. They got the out at third, but not without the victory by the Titans of getting two home. That is one way to uh, reverse a call, if you, if you, yeah, if you will. I'm, wow. I'm pretty certain that the Oakland Golden Grizzly staff wishes, wishes that that one stayed foul, or excuse me, did not stay a foul call as I think Balcon's probably going to be coming. I'd be shocked if she's going to stay in here. Tough going so far in the top of the fourth inning. Detroit with a huge, huge two-run RBI, or two RBIs, to now get the lead over the Golden Grizzlies in the top of the fourth. We now have a conversation between Samantha Henderson, the head coach for the Golden Grizzlies, with the other fellow head coach, Dan Vitale. It doesn't seem to be a hostile conversation. It seems to pre be very fairly friendly, although I'm sure it's not. With a bit of a competitive flair, we could say. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit but of a, no a little one, bit adversarial no, flair. No one yelling at anybody or anything like that, <laughs> which is good. Oh. Both have been at their respective programs for quite some time. They've seen each other more times than they would care to count, I'm sure. And it looks like Balcom will remain on the mound here, a conversation being had on the mound between her and Aaron Benshot, pitching coach. Yeah, Balcom pitch count up to 63 today. Two, three walks, two strikeouts, a triple, a, uh, a double. So just, you know, you start to wonder how much longer she can she go? Are the arms just not quite warm enough in the bullpen yet? Or do you try and let her get you out of this inning with one more out? Well, I would imagine part of it could be, and this is, with all, of course, with all due respect, but when you have a, fre when, when you have a freshman pitcher, one with this high potential is Alyssa Balcom, the, a game against Detroit Mercy is going to be that spot for you to really see what she has. It's a learning and, experience. And to, definitely does, being thrown to the fire here. How does she battle this adversity of just giving up? How does she battle the adversity of giving up that two-run shot as a bunce laid here and it goes backwards? So oh. we'll see what they've got going here with that 0-1 count now. Two outs so far. Two runs in this inning. There's a strike up. A higher, a high one to give it to a 1-1 one, one count. It is now Holt up to bat here. Jenna Holt, the sophomore outfielder from Algonac. That pitch flying high for ball two. Yeah, Balcom needs to find one of those pitches that she likes right now, get out of this inning, and rest that arm because it looks like they're still going action in that bullpen. Here's the 2-1. Just high. That's a 3-1 count here. And right now the advantage, unfortunately, is for the batter in uh, Holt because she's a lefty facing the righty of Balcom. 
So Balcom can't throw some of those breaking balls that'll turn into the barrel. But there is the second strike right there. Now a full count. We got two outs, nobody on base, as Detroit Mercy was able to clear them earlier to get them that 2-1 lead. Here comes the 3-2. Staying alive is Holt as she hits a foul ball over to the left fence. Yeah, Balcom went with one of those fastballs there. She's located those fairly well today. It's been the breaking balls that she's had trouble with, her off speeds. Put that one down over the center of the plate. Holt got a hold of it and fouled it, but Balcom, you know, your fastball gives you the, the best chance in this strikeout, so I'd expect her to look at another fastball here. Here's another 3-2. Low, but still able to hit that one and stay alive at bat here. That's exactly what she did. She threw another fastball. Extending this 3-2 count. Now two pitches extra. Balcom on a 67. Pitch count coming into the inning. That one will hit directly to the dirt. Still staying alive though. <laughs> not, not before it kicked off her right foot and you see Holt shaking that one off. It's a bit of a stinger. One way to stay at, at, uh, on the plate here. <laughs> Absolutely. And she gets ready, gets back into the box. Another 3-2. Letting that one fly by for the walk as she'll get on base. Jenna Holt standing her ground. Yeah, Balcom now up to 67 on the pitch count. So definitely feeling it a little bit, I'm sure. Coming up next to bat, we return to the top of the order, number three, Trinity Fessler for her third at bat of the game today. A little bit of a conversation going on here between the umpire and head coach. And it looks like that will be the day for, for, for Alyssa Balcom. Yep. Coming up in warming up is Mary Newton, number one for the Golden Grizzlies, native of Mason, Ohio, and a transfer from the University of Dayton, a former flyer. Correction to be made, that was Balcom's 76th pitch of the day. So her pitch count, 76. She'll leave this inning. 3.2 innings pitched on the day. Four hits, two runs, an ERA of two. Four walks, two strikeouts, and two doubles. And while we have a moment here, let me remind you all that we got coverage of Goldie Grizzly Sports all year long and all season long here on WXOU. From soccer and volleyball in the fall, from basketball in the winter, club hockey as well, now to baseball and softball, WXOU Sports is the place to be for your favorite college radio station's exclusive coverage of Golden Grizzlies Athletics. Be sure to like and subscribe to the WXOU Sports YouTube channel and follow us all over social media to never miss a beat from WXOU Sports. If you're listening on YouTube, all that information can be found in the description of the live stream here today. So Mary Newton will come in for the Golden Grizzlies, an ERA of 6.92 on the year, one and one in her record, 10 total appearances. So she's definitely used more as a reliever as she's only started three of those games. Flashing the bunt there is Fessler. Trying to get moving, or get the bases moving as Jenna Holt remains on first. Back to the top of the order we go here for the Titans. Fessler one for two on the day. And here's the O, here's the one O rather. Now Detroit Mercy sitting at two outs so far. With a runner on first, looking to extend this already two run top of the fourth. Newton here having a little bit of trouble locating her pitches at the moment. You know, she needs to start heating up and getting in the move of it. Obviously, first couple of pitches, I'm sure, different than throwing in the pen. Right. But definitely going to start to look to get going here. The 2-1 upstairs. And she's she's missing high. Not She's not missing left or right or, or, or low. She's missing all of these highs. So she needs to find a way to bring these pitches down a little bit. Change her release angle or something. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Here at the top of the fourth. There's the pitch. That one flying a little bit lower for strike two. Yeah. Whatever she changed, it's worked. Fire one more of those. That was clearly an off speed. You could tell by the velocity. But so she needs to look to fire one here. Keep that low elevation. 
Full count here, two outs, runner on first. Pop up towards center field. Into the gloves of the Golden Grizzlies. That was Cameron Troyer on the catch to retire the inning. Detroit Mercy scoring two runs in this to gain the 2-1 lead as we now enter the bottom of the fourth here where the Golden Grizzlies look to match or gain the lead here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back here on WXOU Sports for Golden Grizzlies softball. Welcome back everybody to Golden Grizzly Softball here on WXOU Sports. Detroit Mercy gained the lead in the top of the fourth inning with two runs to go up two to one as the Golden Grizzlies now at bat here looking for their revenge. It's Leah Bienowitz up to bat right now for the Golden Grizzlies to start things off. Kavanaugh still on the mound for the Titans. And here's the pitch. Swing at it, low foul ball to the left hitting the fence of the Oakland dugout. And Troyer, once again, having to jump out the way <laughs> just to make sure her ankles don't get clipped by that. So now at an 0-1 count here. Yeah, Bianowitz has a very neutral stance. She calls one off here. The 0-2 count right now after two swings and foul balls for Leah Banowitz. Banowitz, a senior, listed at utility. Right-handed batter from Chesterfield, Michigan. Here's the 0-2 from Kavanaugh. That one flying low and slow. Banowitz still... At bat here, looking to get things moving in the bottom of the fourth. Oakland's got to play catch up here. Detroit Mercy's got to run on them. Here's the pitch. High flying, dodging the glove of the catcher, but still not, nothing, to, uh, nothing to run away from home plate for. Interesting substitution here, uh, putting in Benowitz, someone that's not really known to be a big hitter, only an average of 100 on the year. Slug percentage also 100, but she's got an on-base percentage of 182, so compare that to her average. It's pretty good. She's able to get walks a decent amount, but interesting substitution there. Maybe they like something that we don't know. And a pop-up towards third base will land into the glove of number four. That'd be Jada Davis. That'll be the first, count, the first out here at the bottom of the fourth here. Coming up next is Cameron Troyer, number 24 for the Golden Grizzlies. Yep, Cameron Troyer, really good hitter. Sent one pretty large early, earlier today. Got a hit, able to come home for that run. She's the only run today for the Golden Grizzlies. With a fresh count, here it comes. A little bit outside and away. Troyer, I think she knows what she's looking for. Had no thought about even swinging at that one. Knew that was not her pitch, so. She's definitely looking to catch Kavanaugh on a certain pitch here. Taking a look at the wristband there. Here comes the 1-0. That one flying past for strike one. Yep, so Kavanaugh pitch count up above 45 now. So 
So she's pitched quite a bit, but still a lot lower than what we saw Malcolm do. She's, you know, Oakland's not able to work the pitch count too well in Kavanaugh. She's locating those pitches pretty well. And a big smack on it for a foul ball will fly to the right and enter the, the nearby swamp. Yes, I don't <laughs> think anyone's going to be <laughs> risking their shoes for that one. That, that one will just return to the Oakland wilderness. <laughs> yes, the, the Where it belongs, of the, course. Yeah. The gentleman down there certainly isn't willing to risk his as he <laughs> watched that one roll in and made no attempt to go stop it. A 1-2 count right now. Here it comes. A low hitter will roll towards second base there, and it will reach first in time as Troyer will be tagged out. Yeah, really good play there by Schick. It would field that ball and then fired over to Lara. That's now two outs, no runners on base for the Golden Grizzlies, a one, a three up, three down, in play here for Detroit Mercy. As now Mary Newton enters the lineup in place of Mia Kanifka. There's the first pitch, that one will fly by for ball one. Two outs here. Oh, Detroit Mercy looking to ex to extend the at least the length of time they have their lead here by potentially shutting out Oakland here in the bottom of the fourth. The score remains two to one. Thought and about that one. Mary Newton is a pitcher, obviously. Just came in to relieve Balcom. But a decent batting average, 314. Higher than some of even the low people in the lineup. So definitely someone that can drive them. The 2-0 count right now, here it comes. Thought about it, but too low and too slow. That'll be a 3-0 count right now. And Adam, it looks like Newton's got a little bit of leeway here at this at-bat. Adams, the catcher, tried to get the tried to get Blue behind her to bite a little bit by lifting that glove up at the very last second to field that ball. Missed the little tips of the glove, but Blue wasn't biting. And then here comes the first strike here. We're now to a 3-1 count here. Mary Newton looking to make something happen for Oakland in a so far scoreless bottom of the fourth. The 3-1. Hits that one rolling just to the outfield there. A bobble on the retrieval over there in the right field will allow her to reach first. A really good hit there by Newton. Found a little bit of a gap, found the ball, and drilled that one in between the second baseman and Hoff and the first baseman, Lara. Hoff made a diving attempt for it, got herself quite dirty as it seems, but <laughs> not able to make the save. And a timeout called for Dan Vitale and his Detroit Mercy Titans. We'll see the infielders all huddle up together and the outfielders stand out there by themselves and enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, it, it hits, uh, that hit there, it was rolling onto the dirt in such like an awkward spot. It was, because obviously the first base got to kind of stay put, but just a little bit too far to the right for the second base. Uh, to go and snatch it, and that one slowly rolled over to the outfield, and a little bobble uh, in the outfield uh, certainly didn't help things. No, it didn't, but it does for the Golden Grizzlies as Newton is able to get on. Like I said, the pitcher got a decent batting average, 319, it's, you know, higher up there for, or 314, excuse me, higher up there for the pitchers on this team in terms of their at-plate appearances, and she's able to get out there. It's always awesome to see when, where they can uh, where they could dish it and they can plate it if you will. <laughs> Absolutely. As we now return to play here, double number, zero. number double zero. Johnston. Jenna Johnston returns to the plates here for the Golden Grizzlies, now with Newton on first base. But with two outs here, she has to be careful. Had an RBI earlier in today's game to get Oakland, there's only run so far in the game. Yeah, the sacrifice RBI earlier today, like you said, to score, I believe it was Troyer home. Mm -hmm. So maybe she's looking to do that again. The 0-1, that was a low rolling bouncer. And a few giggles from Jordan Kavanaugh saying, oops. <laughs> Yeah, Adams knows that that was a bit of a mishap, too. I'm not sure if Kavanaugh <laughs> really committed to throwing that pitch. Something went wrong there. But as it stands, it's a 1-1 one, one count here. Two outs, runner on first, and a look at the wristband before the pitch. Here it comes. Quick one down the middle. That will be 
That'll be ball two. Yeah, that one looked like it probably was going to be a strike, but nonetheless, it comes a ball. The umpire may be flipping a coin in his head yeah. to make the decision here. As the Oakland dugout really getting up and active. A 2-1. Swing right over, bouncing past the pitcher, and that will be a quick flip to second base to close the inning. Scoreless for the Golden Grizzlies. Detroit Mercy maintains their lead 2-1. to one. Now entering the top of the fifth inning. We'll be right back here on WXW Sports for more Golden Grizzlies softball. Don't forget to subscribe to WXOU Sports for more live broadcasts like this one right here, along with highlights, interviews, and everything you need from your favorite college radio station. Welcome back here to WXOU Sports for Golden Grizzlies softball. As the top of the fifth has arrived here, Detroit Mercy maintaining their lead 2-1 to one after they scored two in the top of the fourth, leaving Oakland with nothing in the bottom. So Detroit Mercy now with an opportunity to extend their lead in the second game of this series. Off the fifth. Yep, Jada Davis will lead us off here, batting average 153, 0 for 1 on the, on the day, also with a walk. Mary Newton on the mound here for Oakland. Big swing towards right field, right into the gloves of Brooklyn Plitz. Yeah, Mary Newton came out hungry. First pitch swing, fired that one off into right field, but Plitz able to make the catch there for the first out. So if you're Mary Newton, you love that though because it's <laughs> one up, one down with one pitch. Saving your energy, now you've got Cavanaugh, the star player so far for the Titans today on the mound, been mowing people down. And here's the first pitch, strike one. Really good off speed there by Newton. Started high and it just dropped at the last second right over the plate to get a strike on Cavanaugh. Jordan Cavanaugh, native of Macomb, Michigan. Grounds one out to first base to now make it two outs in a hurry here for the Detroit Titans. Fast forwarding this top of the fifth inning so far. Yeah, Ma Mary Newton's got to be loving this. I mean, <laughs> talk about not working a pitch count. And for the pitcher, you love when you're just able to just retire, retire, retire. Three pitches now for Newton in this one. Two outs. And that's strike one here. For the first pitch up to bat now is number 15, Allison Donahue. Yeah, Donahue two at bats today, no hits, no walks, so she's been strutting. And she gets a hit lining the third baseline, traveling all the way to the outfield, stays in play to get her over to first base. Donahue lines it up. As I was saying, she hadn't been doing anything today until right then and there. <laughs> And Caraway made a diving attempt for that one right along the third base line, just not able to get the glove all the way to the white as that one was literally rolling on the white. So that will now bring up number 18 for the Detroit Titans, Jada Lara. Yeah, the first baseman and Lara had some work over there, quite a few flips over there at first base. Two at-bats today, no hits. So Lara's looking to send one deep, I, was, I would be assuming, and try and bring home the base runner in Donahue. Here's the 1-0. -oh. 
thought about it, and that one's a strike. Had a bit of a pump swing on that one, changed her mind, but the umpire says strike. I'll bring it to a 1-1 count. Two outs so far with a runner on first. Big swing on that one for the neck of the bat. Foul ball to the left. On now a 1-2 pitch. Laura, two at-bats, no hits, no runs, no RBI so far. We're going to get some good contact on the bat for her first today. The one-two. Big swing, foul ball over to the left with a lot of power. Yeah, but so now the pitch count's getting worked up there for Newton a little bit. You wonder if maybe um, Laura here is going to work the pitch count and for everybody else that didn't. <laughs> make up for uh, Yeah, make up for it to... Make up for it and foul balls here. <laughs> the one-two again. Swing there, scooped it, pop up towards second base, into the gloves of the Golden Grizzlies to retire the, t the top of the fifth. Leaving that one to no runs for the Titans. They maintain their two-to-one lead over the Golden Grizzlies in game two of this series. And we will be right back here on WX3 Sports for Oakland's chance at bat here in the fifth inning. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to Dunn's. Up to bat right now is number seven, Maddie Harrington for the Golden Grizzlies as Detroit Mercy maintains their two to one lead over the Golden Grizzlies after scoring two in the top of the fourth. Yeah, so this is now where the crossover point can happen for the Golden Grizzlies with Kavanaugh probably getting starting to get a little tired up there as you see her roll one down to the mound. So the Golden Grizzlies have a chance to start taking advantage of her a little bit here. Those fastballs should slow down a little bit as well as the off speeds. The off speed should move a little bit more in terms of her placement and consistency on them. And she's got a bit of a chance if, as we see a drill out here to out left to the field, the but easy catch there. Caught by number 25, Claire Borg. Good job tracking that one, catching it over the shoulder. Yeah. As we were just talking about, uh, Kavanaugh, first pitch went low, tried to adjust it by going high, and that was enough for Maddie Harrington to crack that one, but the outfield was there to snatch it. Yeah, so, I mean, there is a such thing as, as balls too high to hit because what happens is when you hit a ball too high, you're underneath it a little too much, and you can sky it like Harrington did there. Granted, it went deep, but nonetheless, it was still just basically a fly out. That's yeah, a lot of hang time there and time to go get it. Yes. And now up to bat is Brooklyn Plitz starting it back at the top of the order for the Golden Grizzlies. A hit will go right into the glove of first base here. Jaden Lara there to tag Plitz out at first. And now Oakland got themselves a quick two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Plitz has definitely an interesting way of batting. When she swings the bat, she runs as she swings it. I've never really seen something like that, but nonetheless, it must work for her, batting 316 on the year. Oh, you baseball players, never seen a so good softball swing like that before? <laughs> I'm just, oh, yeah. we're all just kidding here. As now up to bat is Macy Brown for the Golden Grizzlies. And Macy Brown just did the same thing. She started walking through her swing. <laughs> <laughs> 1-0 count right now. Oakland quickly with two outs here. Detroit Mercy, 5 of 18, batting today, it's a 278 average. Oakland, 4 of 17, 235 batting average as a team. A strike one thrown down the middle here, 1-1 one, one count. And once again, Brooke, uh, excuse me, Macy Brown running through the swing. 
It's definitely interesting. Jordan Kavanaugh, look at the wristband before launching that one. That bat will fly right to the ground there, and enough time for Macy Brown to get to first base there. Chopping that one directly down into the dirt in front of the batter's box, letting everyone go and chase it while she runs to first base and gets there in time. And she rolls the boat <laughs> on first base. <laughs> Looks like some, maybe some conversation going on here. Well, no, nope, finally we get going. <laughs> it's time to go to the mall, everybody, as Jen Kritzka comes up to bat for the Golden Grizzlies. Yep, Jen Kritzka, the catcher for the Golden Grizzlies, been back there behind the plate, keeping balls in front of her all day today. Now she needs to send one out in front of her at the plate. <laughs> and here's the 0-0. That one, a wild pitch, will allow Macy Brown to go all the way to second base. While catcher Alyssa Adams went and chased it over to the fence. So let's, the back fence, that let's is. Go over <laughs> this, let's go over the scene we have here. We have Kritzko batting 419 on the year at bat. One ball, zero strikes, and then we've got a great base runner in Plitz out there in the field. So you've got a – or Brown, excuse me, Brown, not Plitz. So you've got a chance if you're the Golden Grizzlies, if Kritzka can send one out of the outfield, get down, you've got a chance to tie this one up. 1-0 pitch. Thought about it. Let that one go by for a strike one. It's think, Kavanaugh and Kritzka. I think Kritzka knows the stakes right here, knows the chance that they have, knows Kavanaugh's getting tired. She's probably going to, she might not pitch that next inning, but Kritzka got to take advantage here if she can find the right pitch. And she finds one she likes, but not able to get it as it's bobbled by the second baseman. Eventually retired for the third and final out. Got there just in time there. Unable to bring Macy Brown back. And to retire the bottom of the fifth for the Golden Grizzlies as they remain scoreless here. We are frozen here with still a two-run score. Detroit Mercy with the lead in game two. And we'll be back here at the top of the sixth here on WXOU Sports. Welcome back, everybody, to WXOU Sports for Golden Grizzlies softball as Oakland down 2-1 to one over to Detroit Mercy Titans, who are now batting at the top of the six. And a big hit there over to left field there will allow Schick for Detroit Mercy to quickly get on first base and to get things rolling here at the top of the six. Detroit Mercy looking to extend their 2-1 lead over their in-state rivals. Yeah, Amanda Schick once again sending one into the outfield and gets on base. She's had a pretty good game today. She struck out in that first at bat, but since then she's been able to get on base. Newton here with the pitch. There's the bunt. Executed perfectly. Can she get there to first? She can, but a runner is advanced over to second. Schick will now reside on the second base there with the sacrifice bunt to move her over. We are now joined by, or not joined by, but rather onto the plate is number 25, Claire Borg. Here's the pitch. 
Kind of a floater up high. Hoff there to get the sacrifice bunt there to move her teammate over. Borg, the freshman from St. Clair, looking to advance her further. There's strike one, a 1-1 one -one count. Top of the six here, Detroit leads by one. A low scoring two to one game. Mercy with six hits so far in the game. Oakland with five. Yeah, Oakland's been able to get people on. They just haven't been able to bring them home as that one's going to the swamp. And the young man tracking over there <laughs> has a decision on if he wants to risk his shoes for it. And the, the decision is, uh, heck no. <laughs> I would not either. The counts of two, or one, two, here it comes. And Schick over there on second base, antsy to get over the third. Two, two count. One out. I'd like to remind everybody you can subscribe to WXLU Sports for more games just like these as the 2-2 two -two pitch is upstairs. A little note on board, two at bats today, one hit, two RBIs though with that double she hit earlier. So definitely a threat here to drive in the runners, or runner, excuse me. That will be a walk as Borg will now join Schick over on the bases here. Detroit now with two runners on base. Still the 2-1 lead as Oakland will take a meeting over at the mound. Yeah, you wonder, I, I don't see any action in the Oakland Golden Grizzly bullpen, so my guess is that they want Mary Newton to... Golden yes, Grizzlies yes, historic men's basketball season. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, we'll break it. It'll be broken up for everybody <laughs> listening. But um, no, it was a great segment. I think people would have a lot of fun watching that one. As Holt now at bat there, looking for the bunt, couldn't get it. Trying to advance the two runners. Schick and Borg still reside second and first respectively. And respectfully, of course. Advice from the crowd is to slow down and chill out. I would assume that be her father. <laughs> and there's, and the, and there's the hit between down. second and third. Shallow outfield to get the bases loaded. It looks like the advice worked, Joe. <laughs> She cranks one in the left field. Pops knows best. As now. that is now Schick, Borg, and Holt on third, second, and first. Three, to now three, bring up the top of the order here, number three, Trinity Fessler, with an opportunity to extend the lead for the Titans. And there is some action in the bullpen, so we'll see if Newton maybe gets relieved this inning or into the next inning. But also worth noting is the fact that the Golden Girls just cannot get out of this one. If they're able to, you know, turn two here, you really just cannot let up a shot into the outfield. An outfield's going to result in a sack RBI. We only have one out. You can turn two and get out of this inning with no damage done. And pass two pitches up high, and Kritzka immediately bolting the ball over to third base. To Almost knocked Schick on the head. Yeah, Caraway attempting to tag out Schick, but Schick able to get back there in time. A 2-0 count, one out, base is loaded. For Detroit Mercy, there's a the pitch. Strike down the middle. Yeah, so Newton, gotta corral yourself here. Get to your pitch. Every pitcher's got two or three pitches that they love throwing. They can locate really well even when they're tired. So Newton, gotta find one of those here. There's a 2-1. Big hit over to right field, into the glove of the Golden Grizzlies at home. It's a race and the ball flies through Kritzka. Unable to get it, but that will freeze the bases. Heck of a throw from Plitz all the way in right field to hold the runners. Caught that wall, caught that ball, excuse me, fired it down to Kritzka. Ball goes by Kritzka, but Newton is there to back up Kritzka and prevent Schick from coming home. Schick went back and forth about three different times as if it was a football drill. <laughs> Doing the shuttle run. Absolutely. So as a result, it's just a, an out, uh, out caught and outfield, and the bases remain the same and loaded. First base is Holt, second base is Borg, and third base is Schick for the Gold, or excuse me, for the Detroit Mercy Titans. Unfortunately for Schick, it is not the NFL Combine anymore. <laughs> so doing the shuttle run does not help anything. <laughs> just miss a little bit on the Combine season. <laughs> yes, literally. 
But I suppose better late than never. You ever have a teacher say that, like when a kid walks in late in class, they're like, oh, better late than never. Or, <laughs> or they're like, oh, nice of you to come today. Oh, that's what my father says all the time. We wake up in the morning on Saturday, he goes, oh, hey, thanks for coming in today. Because he's been up for like five hours already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, there's this, there's these like two people at my work that always come in late. So anytime they come in, just because they live kind of far away, so traffic is super unpredictable for them. So every time they come in, let's say they come, you're supposed to be at 5, and they come in at 5.13, and I go, hey, <laughs> nice of you to come in today. <laughs> All right, better late than never. Uh, oh, old school office talk. <laughs> exactly. As now the Golden Grizzlies will be go undergoing a pitching change here and bringing out the big guns. It's Sydney Campbell returning to the mound for the Golden Grizzlies. We had a conversation with her after the Youngstown State Series that you can find right here on WXOU Sports right after the game. I had an interview with her talking about her matchup against the best pitcher or fellow best pitcher in the Horizon League. That was Sophie Howell of Youngstown State as Oakland was able to come out on top against the series with the Penguins last weekend. Yes, yeah, Sidney Campbell, arguably the best pitcher for Oakland. As a big pop-up towards center field, hit right away into the glove of Cameron Troyer in the outfield. So one up, one down for Sidney Campbell, but really quick, one of the, probably the best pitcher for the Golden Grizzlies. Win, loss, nine and five, ERA at 2.3. She started 15 of the 17 games she's played. 98 innings pitched this year, next highest on the team is Balcom with 36, so definitely a great pitcher. One of the best that Oakland has ever seen is she last season set the record for career wins, and from now on for this season, it's all building on top. As we will now take a break here as this top of the sixth inning has concluded and will return with the Golden Grizzlies at bat in the bottom of the sixth. Detroit's still up 2-1, and we'll be right back here on WXOU Sports. Welcome back here to WXOU Sports. It's Golden Grizzlies softball in game two against the Detroit Mercy Titans. Oakland up to bat right now, down 2-1. And it is now Taylor Carraway at bat for Oakland to start things off in this inning. Cavanaugh still on the mound here for Detroit. He's done a good job so far during the game holding Oakland to five hits and one run. Yeah, so Golden Grizzlies really need to start trying to get on the board here. Bottom of the sixth, obviously only got one other chance outside of this one to tie this one up. 1-0 pitch, smack that one for a foul ball behind us, spooking those who weren't aware uh, in the Detroit crowd. <laughs> Kavanaugh still up there on the mound. So five innings pitched so far, going for six. They might let her pitch the whole game. 1-1 one, one count. Kavanaugh takes a look at the wristband. Pitch decided, thrown, and another foul ball to the right. Hitting that one with the neck of the bat. A lot of spin as it flew over to the lonely, but not so lonely pile of tires. <laughs> They've been collecting softballs all day long. They sure have. A little bit of a pickup of the breeze here that will fly the flag that the fans have staked over there in the outfield, or behind the outfield, of course. Another pop-up here, that will fly towards the Detroit crowd, smashing into the stands here. I don't know about you, but I got a little nervous there. I grabbed my clipboard, and I was ready to hit I, that thing I was away ready from me. To, I was ready to run away, Drew, <laughs> okay? Let me tell you a quick story about fly balls here. So last season, it was April 2nd, game three, baseball against Milwaukee. One of those balls, five minutes before the, the, I was on the TV broadcast, bounced off my laptop. Smoke the thing. So from now on, every foul ball that flies up like that, I'm on, I'm on pins and needles trying to run away, Drew, yeah. okay? <laughs> well, I mean, you talked about it earlier about this, about this little overhanging cage stopping balls, and I said, well, won't stop them all. One will come over at least, only a matter of time. And nonetheless, here it came. So no harm, no foul, no broken bones. We're back to ball. Well, no harm and a foul, but foul ball, That's, rather. That is true, that is true. 
<laughs> the one two count right now, no outs. Smacking that one to the out to the right outfield. That'll be a foul ball here as Taylor Caraway is still looking to find the hit. But getting good contact so far to stay alive with a one-two count. Yep, Kavanaugh pitch count up almost 70 now. So Caraway working this pitch count a little bit. Had quite a few here. Trying to probably get on base, trying to start to rally here for the Golden Grizzlies. We saw the Detroit Tigers rally last night. <laughs> See if the Golden Grizzlies can do it today. So here comes another one. That one will fly beyond the fence. An empty segment of the Oakland side of the attendance uh, got hit by the softball there. Caraway letting them fly everywhere, just looking for one into the outfield. And the Oakland dugout is singing and roaring for their Taylor Caraway. Here's a one, two. That one's upstairs for two balls on the at bat. Man, after all that, it's a two, <laughs> two count. I would have, if you would have, it's crazy. Usually you should expect that at a full count. Yes, all these, all the because foul of balls. how long Caraway's been up there. I didn't even really think about the count because I've just been seeing foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. <laughs> and there's a the pitch. Another foul ball over to right field. That one will hit the, that one will hit the grass, or rather the new turf that the Oakland softball field has been sporting this season. A bright and consistent green <laughs> over None, in the outfield. Nonetheless, Caraway stays at bat. Still at a 2-2 count here. We're at the bottom of the sixth inning. Detroit's up 2-1. And Oakland, no runners on base, zero outs in the bottom of the six here. 2-2 count, Caraway. Getting her thoughts together as well as Kavanaugh. Here there comes the pitch. A high one, sky high over to left field. Will it be in play? It will be in play, but in the glove of outfielder number 25, Claire Borg for Detroit Mercy. After all that time, that one from our distance, it looked like it was going to go beyond the fence. It looked and it, we knew it was going to stay in play, but just in time was Borg to catch it. Bit of a heartbreaker there for Caraway. Oh yeah. All of oh, the yeah. effort that went into that at bat and just to end up in a fly out by a running Borg. And nothing but relief for Kavanaugh as a yeah. pitch count piling up on her and she's like, finally, a new batter. <laughs> yeah. And now we have Bianowitz up here. There's Over the pitch. Two today is Bianowitz. And a first strike thrown by Kavanaugh. Bianowitz did ha her last at bat though, able to advance a runner. So really good job there by Bianowitz. Looking for the second pitch here, it's an 0-1 count. There it comes, outside to make it a 1-1 count. Getting encouragement from her teammates in the dugout. I'd love to know the entire set list of the songs that they sing over there in the dugout. <laughs> yeah, me too. For 1-1. I, I, I want to know how they choose them and pick all of these chants that they have. As a swing and a miss for Bianowitz will bring a 1-2 count here. I'd imagine during the offseason, like, every, like you know, after practices, they have, like, small meetings. Like, like you, you got to organize this stuff. You got to teach yeah. everyone. You got to teach imagine, the lyrics. Uh, we, we have a chant meeting today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Players only. And there's a big smack pop up towards center field. Will be fielded by Detroit Mercy. It is... Fessler on the catch for Detroit Mercy to get the second out to the Golden Grizzlies. Detroit Mercy playing great defense so far. Spearheaded by Jordan Cavanaugh with the pitching, but the outfield has been there doing the work to keep things close. And I think for U of D now, they're starting to feel it. They have, the, I mean, they've only won one game this year. And they're leading right now two to one. They're starting to feel the chance that they might be able to get out of this one. And when you give a team like that confidence, they can go to the moon with it. And here's the next pitch. Uh, batting now is Cameron Troyer. Yeah, watching the body language of Davis, Schick, Kavanaugh. They are very, very loose out there, surprisingly. Very loose, very happy, it seems like. A 1-0 count so far. Here it comes. Pop up toward the left. That'll be a foul, that'll be away a foul ball. 
Yeah, that one was headed towards the dome. <laughs> That'll be a 1-1 one, one count, two outs here in the bottom of the six. Oakland down two to one. And Detroit Mercy looking for their second win of the season against their, this time against their in-state rivals. Yep, still Troy are up there, one and one on the night. And or a one for two, excuse me. And a swing and a miss down the middle there will bring up a one-two count. With one more strike, that'll send Oakland to the outfield, scoreless still. Without that one run in the bottom of the second. A one, two count, two outs, here it comes. Just little outside. Bit, little bit outside. Really good job there by Troyer watching that one. Knew it was gonna go outside, not swinging. So the, the Golden Grizzlies have not jumped at pitches. They haven't been trying to chase pitches. They've done a really, really good job. You know that they've been down most of this game of letting their pitches come. And there's a pop up to center field on the 2-2. Fielded, sprinting over was Trinity Fessler to get the third inning and close out the six. Detroit will lead it still. 2-1 to one over the Golden Grizzlies as we enter the final inning, the seventh inning here on WXOU Sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to WXOU Sports, everybody, for the final inning, potentially, of this game here. We're at the top of the seventh with Detroit Mercy, a 2-1 lead over the Golden Grizzlies. It is now Jordan Cavanaugh at the bat. Start things off for Detroit. It will be star pitcher against star pitcher. Sidney Campbell on the mound for Oakland, pitching to the pitcher. Giovanni Mosheri alongside Drew Allison taking you through the story of game two of this series between Oakland and Detroit Mercy. Oakland won the first one yesterday, 10 zip in five innings. This one, a much different story. Now, Kavanaugh is gonna try and probably bait Sidney Campbell a little bit here to get into her pitch. Obviously being a pitcher, she understands the mindset of a pitcher <laughs> and might look to take advantage of that. A one, or excuse me, a 2-0 count right now. And you gotta imagine that give, uh, gives you a batter's advantage here to, to know like, like you, you know what the pitcher wants to do, but when you are a pitcher, you know exactly what they're gonna be wanting to do. Absolutely, and then Kavanaugh today, she's been walked twice. So she's done a really good job of working that pitch count, not swinging at pitches that aren't strikes. I mean, sorry, that aren't balls. 3-0 count right now. Campbell brings the heat. And that'll be strike one. Yeah, so Campbell now got to look to find one of her pitches, one of her favorite ones here at a 3-1 count. So she's got a chance to get out of this inning quickly and retire Kavanaugh. She can throw two strikes here. And there's Swing one. and a miss. Well, that's one way to do it. Now a full count here at the top of the seventh inning. Kavanaugh leading it off for Detroit Mercy. The full count, here it comes. Down the middle, bouncing off the ground for a foul ball. From the bat to the ground, rolling away. Kavanaugh with an eye roll there. She's like, oh, I gotta do this again. <laughs> it's not easy batting against Sidney Campbell. One of the top pitchers in the Horizon League. Another full count, here it comes. Big swing, foul ball to left field, but it'll keep Kavanaugh at the plate. And show Detroit, hey, I can hit this thing. 
Yeah, really good swing there by Kavanaugh. Just, just way too early on that one. Got a hold of that ball and drove it, but just really, really early on that pitch. Uh, Sydney Campbell baited her there with the off speed. The Mercy dugout excited as well. Another full count, here it comes. Same deal from the bat to the plate and behind. It will still keep Kavanaugh there, but Kavanaugh really wants this hit. She's frustrated yep. with uh, the foul balls here. I think she'd be happy with just going back to the bench. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, it's felt like a long at bat. Here it comes. A grounder over to first base will be a quick out after all that trouble. That's one of the things that Sydney Campbell brings you is that when you do get a hold of her pitches, a lot of times because of the spin she puts on them and where they're located, it just ends up in a ground out. She doesn't give up a whole lot of hits. A 218 batting average against her, so not someone that it's easy to hit off of. And that will now bring up the next batter for Detroit Mercy, number 15, Allison Donahue. Strike one thrown by Campbell here, one out, top of the seventh. Detroit up two to one. Here's a second pitch. Swung at that one, hit the bottom of the bat, striking the ground for a foul ball there. 2 0, or excuse me, an 0 2 count right now for Donahue. Yeah, Donahue one for three in the night, so she's got gotten a hold of one of them, but the rest of her at bats have ended in a retirement. The 0 2. A little bit downstairs, a lot of speed for a ball one. Yeah, that one ended up in the dirt there for Campbell, but a really good play at the plate by Kritzka to grab that one off the dirt. Campbell making her decision. Here comes the one two. Big hit shallow right over to second base. That was Macy Brown on the catch there. Once again, what do we say? You get a hold of Campbell's pitches, usually ends in an infield out. Yeah, both the, both the hits that Detroit Mercy got the pass to uh, at bats, same spot between first and second, not even into the turf. As that will bring up number 18, Jaden Lara. Up to bat here for Detroit Mercy. Strike one thrown by Campbell. She's ready to get out, get them out of here early. Yeah, Lara 0 for 3 on the night, so Campbell probably knows that, or maybe um, just knows that Lara's been struggling tonight. So once again, she can take advantage there. And there's an off speed pitch there. Got Lara swinging early. As that'll be an 0-2 count, two outs, one more strike. We'll send them back to the outfield. Here it comes from Campbell. And just outside. Be a 1-2 count here. If I'm Campbell up there on that mound, I'm probably going to play a little bit of games with uh, Lara there. Take a little bit of time. Maybe act like you're adjusting a little bit and try and get in her head to get the strike out here as she hits her. That'll move her over to first base there. It hurt the smack off the left shoulder. Yeah. And now up comes Amanda Schick, someone that's had a pretty successful day at the plate. On, have been all over the place, yeah. you know, in the outfield and, you know, at, in the batter's box as well. With yeah. two outs here and a runner on base here, Detroit looks to extend their lead. Sydney Campbell, fastball. We'll bring it over to the right outfield into the gloves of Brooklyn Plitz, or rather the singular glove. <laughs> that will retire the inning. In the top of the seventh here, Oakland with a chance to tie and extend the game or gain the lead and win it. In the bottom of the seventh here, the final chance at bat for Oakland. We'll be right back here on WXOU Sports. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back here to the final inning of WXOU Sports' presentation of Oakland Softball. It's game two against the Detroit Mercy Titans. The Titans lead it two to one. Oakland with a chance to either tie the game and extend it to extra innings or gain the lead themselves and end it in a walk-off. Maddie Newton up to bat here to start this last stretch, this last push for the Golden Grizzlies. High stakes here on a Wednesday afternoon. Now right here for the Golden Grizzlies, I will say I don't understand the strategy of, Ma of letting Maddie Newton bat. How so? Because she's a pitcher, and you are likely not going to be pitching again, so why not <laughs> pinch hit? Why not put in a pinch hitter? A big smack for a foul ball to the right. Just over the tires this time, they caught a break. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying is because she's a pinch hitter, you're likely not going to, to pitch again. The worst case scenario, you have to bring in one of your um, other pitchers, unless Maddie Newton here might be pitch, pinch hitting for somebody else. Or maybe the idea is Oakland wants to extend this into extra innings and you know planning for just getting a single run this inning to bring it to those extra innings. There's a 1-1 count on the board right now. Kavanaugh looking to close it out. There's a pitch, hit the ground first, foul ball to the left. 1-2 count, no outs, as Newton will leading it off so far for Oakland in the bottom of the seventh. I believe that Mandy Newton actually has to bat right now because she was a pitcher earlier. We saw Mia Kanivka take the opening at bat, mm -hmm. and then after that, it was Balcom. So then when Balcom retired, Maddie Newton came in. Maddie Newton hasn't batted yet, so now she has to take her turn at bat being a pitcher that pitched today. So I don't believe that they could do a pinch hitter in this situation, actually. The one-two, rolling off the dirt here. Yeah, because I would imagine if you have the opportunity to send one of your best batters out in a situation yes. where you need, where you, you can't really need it more than now. Mm -hmm. But thinking about it, I, uh, Maddie Newton hasn't gone to the plate today, so it would make sense then that they uh, do not use a pinch hitter because she has the bat. As we get a ball here, and the unpaid officials are not happy to my right. Our away crowd here upset at the now full count here as Ma Mary Newton looking to get on base and get things moving here. As Oakland needs at least one run to keep play going and two to win it. Kavanaugh looking it over. Reading the wristband. Pop up. Catcher's got it. Alyssa Adams throwing the, throwing the helmet off, fielding that one perfectly on a full count to give Oakland their first out and their last chance. Two outs left as Jenna Johnson gets ready to bat here for Oakland. Jenna Johnson scoring an RBI to get Oakland their only run in the bottom of the second. Yeah, Jenna Johnson, a bit of a slower year. 146 is the average, seven hits on the year, but no bigger time than now to start that bat. An 0-1 count right now. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. Jenna Johnson getting her dugout support here. There's a pitch, low and outside. Yeah, Kavanaugh struggling to locate those pitches right now. She struggled a little bit there against Newton. You know, resulted in that in that pop out, but I mean, she's in the final inning of this game. She's going to pitch this entire game, obviously, and you know, far bearing any extra inning possibilities, but definitely getting fatigued. And a low ground ball over to third base. We'll reach first and get Jenna Johnson out before she can reach first base. And that will leave Maddie Harrington with a final out at stake here. Yeah, once again, a really good play there by Schick over there at third. Pick that ball up off the dirt. A little bit of a roller, so it's one that you kind of have to judge the bounce a little bit on. Able to judge it correctly and fire that one into first base for the second out. Two outs so far. No runners on base for Oakland. They need one to continue. Kavanaugh, 94 pitches. Here comes the 95th. That's strike one. Jordan Kavanaugh, the big red. 
Big Red in high school, and now a Big Red in terms of their jerseys here <laughs> at for the Titans. Supporting the Detroit Red. As a pop-up towards center field, towards second base, yeah. will conclude the game here. Detroit gets their second win of the season against their in-state rivals. The second place Oakland Golden Grizzlies fall in game two. Final score, two to one. And the Detroit Mercy players, coaches, and fans are more than excited. Today is a doubleheader. A second game will be played here. Unfortunately, WXOU will not be able to broadcast it. So you can check out the live stats via GoldenGrizzlies.com, the TV broadcast on ESPN Plus, to watch game three of the Titans and the Golden Grizzlies. It's winner take all for this midweek series, and that will conclude our broadcast here on WXOU. Final score once again is two to one. Detroit Mercy wins it. It's Giovanni Mosheri and Drew Allison. We thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to WXOU Sports, and we will see you this weekend as baseball takes on Purdue Fort Wayne at home. We'll see you then on WXOU Sports.